Hello and welcome to TVC News at 10. The top stories tonight. President Tinubu says Nigeria will reduce methane emissions at least 30% by 2030. Julius Berger formally hands over Second Niger Bridge to the federal government. Outside Nigeria, four people killed, including two children, in Queens, New York, stabbing attack. And in our Sunday specials, we'll be looking at the one chance criminals taking advantage of the failing of the transport system in Abuja to carry out the operations. Good evening and welcome to TVC News at 10. We'll begin in the United Arab Emirates, where the federal government has agreed to set up a humanitarian response stations across the country in a bid to bring timely succor to victims of disaster. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Beta Edu, told State House correspondents in Dubai after her interaction with officials of the Emirati government at the ongoing United Nations Climate Change Conference. She said Nigeria will use the help of the UAE to tackle humanitarian crisis arising from insurgency, particularly in the Northeast, as well as to end the poverty endemic poverty in other parts of the country. Earlier, President Bola Tinubu says Nigeria is committed to methane emissions reduction by at least 30% by 2030. President Bola Tinubu says Nigeria is committed to methane emission reduction by at least 30% in the current year. Methane is a hydrocarbon that is a primary component of natural gas as well as greenhouse gas. And its presence in the atmosphere affects the Earth's temperature and the climate. Speaking at a forum on methane and other non-CO2 emissions reduction, President Tinubu said Nigeria, as signatory to the COP28 Global Decarbonization Accelerator, and having signed off as a member of the UN Global Compact, is working to achieve the aims of the summit. The president also emphasized that the country has taken critical steps to reduce methane emissions by ensuring flare elimination and focusing on gas as replacement. President Tinubu assured the gathering that Nigeria would continue to be partner in progress. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edun, and the Executive Chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Zach Adedeji, also spoke. Be partner in progress to achieve renewable. We are committed to energy mix. We are providing cooking gas for a large population. We will continue to do that. We've signed off on reduction of methane. We will leverage on new technology. The growth that we are looking for is actually going to be green growth. It's going to be in the direction of uh, uh, energy efficient, climate friendly transactions that the growth is going to come. So it's not environment or growth, it's going to be environment and growth. This committee is dedicated to steering the Nigeria Carbon Market Admission Plan, a strategic initiative that underscores our determination to address Nigeria's past carbon potential through the implementation of efficient policies and framework. These tricycles... So apologies for that. Let's quickly move on to our next story, where the National Orientation Agency in Abuja has launched a compressed natural gas, Keke Napep, an initiative of by the federal government to cut down the high cost of transportation across the country. The agency's partner stakeholders in the private sector is in executing this program. And our correspondent, Maria Mohammed, reports.
These tricycles, powered by compressed natural gas, will reduce the reliance on petroleum motor spirit as ordinary Nigerians groaning under the biting effect of the subsidy removal will now have an affordable alternative source of energy. The current galloping pump price of petrol does not show signs of easing soon. The hardship have also forced the government to roll out intervention plans and provide palliatives to cushion the effects of subsidy removal. The National Orientation Agency is working to implement some of the federal government's programs through the distribution of tricycles that will ease local transportation and improve livelihood of the beneficiaries. Longevity to the cylinder, otherwise changing the cylinder is also added. The agency assures Nigerians that the CNG tricycle will drastically reduce the high costs of transportation and other challenges. About 10,000 CNG filling stations across the country have been uh, put in place. Uh, this is um, along with the private um, concerns who are also uh, trying to uh, open as, much, as many stations as possible um, so that we can have CNG as an alternative source to power our automobiles. Other partners involved in distribution of the CNG powered tricycles explains the effect of this intervention. A long time of research back and forth was able to come up with a brand that will use both CNG and petrol. But essentially, it is manufactured to use the CNG with a capacity of uh, 5 kilograms, 5 SCM that can manage, that a rider can manage for a minimum of one week uh, if he travels 24 kilometers a day because it's a, a one SCM will give him 45 kilometers. These tricycles will be eco-friendly and also reduce transportation costs if the program is fully implemented across the country. Mari Mohamed, CBC News, Abuja. And seven months after the inauguration of the second Niger Bridge, the contractor Julius Berger has formally handed over the multi-billion Naira project to the federal government. In a brief ceremony at the Asaba end of the bridge, the Minister of Works, Dave Umahi, confirmed that the vandalized portions have been fixed. Our correspondent Ikenna Amichi reports. The second Nanja Bridge, conceived decades ago but started in 2018, was inaugurated in May this year. Though the contractor remained on site after months of working on the project to finish some aspect of the 1.6 kilometer long bridge, and today they are officially handing over the bridge to the federal government. In middle of the year uh, in May, the, the bridge was commissioned by the previous administration and today is a technical uh, I'm handing over with the Honorable Minister. He has seen what Julius Berger has delivered to the highest quality. I think he's satisfied. The Minister of Works, who received the project from the company, commended the former president for starting the project, adding that the next step will be taken by this administration. The structures we are seeing are the structures for the Tulin Plaza. The road is going to be completed when we have completed the two interchanges. One is taking us off from the Asaba town so that if you are coming to this bridge, you don't have to go through the Asaba town and encounter a lot of wood up. The other one and this to be done by JB. The other one is to be done by RCC, which takes us off from here, avoid on Nisha town and they gets us to Bosi. And that is when this entire job was said to be completed. His Excellency President Bola Tunibu is very committed to completing this project so that uh, tooling can uh, start. The second Nanja Bridge project has 46.9 kilometers of link roads which stretch from Onicha to Asaba. And it is the Asaba end that is yet to be completed. At yeah, the moment the two interchanges are done, then the food is ready and then the concession will come but then uh, part of the concessioning is for you know an investor to come and take over the funding of the two interchanges complete it and toll it and then recover your money and uh, the land we intend to acquire is also very helpful uh, for the recovery of uh, the funds of the investor because you are going to acquire make a lot of money 
on the usual gridlock experience during the Christmas season, the minister also says the ministry will be working out modalities to ease traffic at the old and new bridges. Ikenna Amechi, TVC News, As. Now five persons have been arrested in connection to the armed robbery and killing of a student at a gateway polytechnic in Ugun State in the early hours of Saturday, 2nd of December. The Commissioner of Police, Abiodun Alamutu, has also deployed additional patrol vehicles and personnel to the area and appealed to students and residents of the state to be security conscious. Our correspondent, Kazim Olowe, has won this. <laughs> of Gateway Polytechnic Shark Party on Saturday, 2nd of December 2023, took to the streets to protest against what they called increasing insecurity in Oderemo area. They say many students have been attacked, raped, and the last one was the killing of one of them, identified as Makidi Oluakpelumi. They claimed that nine other students were injured during the attack. Although the school management refused to comment on the matter, but the Ogun State Commissioner of Police, Abiodun Alamutu, who had earlier organized a security meeting with heads of tertiary institutions in the state in November, confirmed the incident, but he denied that nine persons were injured. He said, aside from the death of one person who was shot around 3 a.m. after returning from the nightclub, only three persons sustained minor injuries and they have been treated and discharged. At about or oh, zero three hundred hours there was a report uh, there was a distress call that a group of armed robbers were terrorizing the community at the lemo large you know, community particular community there so the dpo raced to the area with patrolmen on citing the presence of police and in their bid to escape they started firing sporadically to get out of the location it was one of the stray bullets that hit some students that were on the road they actually claimed to have just returned from club and were trying to charge their phone they were heading to another hostel another um, residence within the area uh, one was fatally injured three were you know, in fact, the person he gave up before getting to the hospital. The other three were, were they had minor injuries, they were treated and discharged. The story flying in social media is that nine persons were injured. No, 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 it was three, and the three in question have been treated and discharged. He said the command has arrested five persons in connection to the incident and a Lexus vehicle which was snatched during the robbery and another one have been recovered. Efforts to get reaction from the school authority proved abortive as the public relations officer of the institution refused to pick calls or respond to text messages sent to her phone. The Commissioner of Police, Ogun State Command, has assured residents of Ode, Ishara, Shakpade, and other communities in that axis that the command has provided additional security vehicles and personnel in ensuring that stability returns to the area and, of course, the students are well protected. Kazim Olowe, TVC News, Abe Okuta. We will be having the Vice President of the Committee of Defense of Human Rights, Yinka Folarin, to give us his perspective on this very issue. And we'll have that more discussions on this in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still on to TVC News at 10. And now have joining me. Joining me right now to discuss more on the security situation in Oderemo, Ogun State, a Vice President of the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights, Yinka Folarin. Good to have you on the news at this time. So first off, let's have your thoughts on the recent incident in Ogun State where students were attacked by, by armed robbers and some were also you know, attacked in the process. What do you make of this and how do you think this can be nipped in the board? Well, I, I want to sympathize with, uh, with the student community over what I tag as a very, very pathetic uh, development in our state. And um, I feel the, the commissioner of police 
and the command has actually um, kickstarted the process. They have uh, made intervention to see how the situation can be can be put to rest. But I feel that uh, it also calls for concern that uh, there must be a collective effort towards nipping this in the board. I would expect beyond the police, the other sister agencies and the local security out outfit should collaborate in ensuring adequate protection of, of uh, for lives and uh, property of the people in Oderemo and the state uh, as a whole. But uh, very good enough, the the rapid response from the from the police is quite uh, commendable. And uh, equally, I feel the economic situation in the country and the um, and, and 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 the many failures of some critical stakeholders to do what is expected has also contributed to to this and i would say without security there's nothing we can achieve and for the students honestly i sympathize with them i sympathize with them and i feel that the cp has said it we all have to be very very vigilant it is uh, it is beyond the demo it is happening virtually most uh, part of the state and the country so uh it kind of vigilance is, is is the best but uh for the local security outfit they should complement the effort of the police in ensuring that there is adequate protection to the grassroots level and i feel by so doing the even the uh the the institution also must ensure they double their effort in securing uh their, their students Right. Not leaving their security to them to to, to themselves alone. And with so that, it is quite pathetic. And for the life uh, life lost, I I sympathize. And for those who have been arrested, we shall be waiting for them to face the wrath of the law right. and the court. And with that being said, let's look at the students who are also traumatized in, the, in this process. What immediate or long term support do you think should be given to them at this point? The first thing they need is the assurance from those that are concerned, those who are saddled with the responsibility of uh, protecting them. And um, that is, uh, we talk about uh, the security agencies, actually the Nigeria Police Force, which the CP claim to have been doing. They have increased the number of security presence in that environment. So it is about assurance. It is when they are assured that such will not reoccur, that the fears will be Will be allayed. So uh, not until these are, are, are actually done, I I feel that trauma may still be there. But um, at the same time, there should be um, there should be a sustainable security arrangement in that environment. It is beyond the intervention alone. There should be a sustainable one. We must have increase of uh, our security presence in that environment. All and right. for the student, they need to also know that it is uh, it, it, it is not about their school alone. It is happening. It is happening in most parts of the country and even uh, in the state. So all we right. all have to be vigilant. We all have to double up efforts in ensuring that when we see something, we see something. Indeed. We should uh, volunteer intelligence to the security agencies and uh, ensure that um, we keep ourselves safe as well. Right, double of efforts as well to the safety of students and residents. Thank you so much, Yinka Folarin, Vice President of the Committee for Defense of Human Rights. We appreciate your insights on the news at 10 tonight. Well, let's quickly go to Osho State, where the police command has paraded criminal suspects for various offenses ranging from alleged kidnapping, robbery, unlawful possession of firearms and attempted murder. The suspects were paraded by the new Oshun State Commissioner of Police, Ishak Mohammed, at the police headquarters in Ushubu. It's another arrest of suspected criminals who have been disturbing the peace of the state. They were apprehended by the police in different towns in the state, with some items recovered from them. The Commission of Police said the suspects will be duly investigated and made to face appropriate prosecution. CP Zak Mohammed thereafter had an interaction with media practitioners in the state where he promised to fashion out effective strategies to address security issues identified by the journalists. With the cooperation of 
other security agencies in the state and the stakeholders such as the traditional rulers, religious leaders, uh, public spirited associations, students and young uh, youth leaders, etc. As security is collective responsibility, I have no doubt that together we shall fight all criminals element in the state to a standstill. And Oshimu he pledged to ensure promotion of professionalism in the operations of officers of the command. I want to clearly state that as the chief law enforcer of, this, of the state, my mission to bring to reality the vision of the Inspector General of Police of zero tolerance to corruption, a secured environment for citizens to strive, policing with international breath practices, holding a rule of law and respect for fundamental human rights for all citizens. All this I shall strive to have, I shall strive hard to achieve, especially with the support of the team of spirited officers and men I met in command. On assumption of office in the state, the CP had paid a courtesy call on the owner of Ife, Obadiah Yobusi, as a mark of honor for the traditional ruler and also to seek his support in policing the state. Thank you for your life and uh, I want to thank you for the commitment ahead that you're going to give to Oshun. Rest assured that this tune is yours. Like you said, you have found out where you came from. This is yours. He also used the opportunity to visit Ife Police Area Command. Rafi Hamid, TVC News, Oshun. Well, let's go to Kanu State, where the police has confirmed the arrest of a senior special assistant to the cabinet office and one other for alleged diversion of palliatives. The state commissioner of police, Usaini Gumel, confirmed the arrest to newsmen in a telephone conversation shortly after Governor Abba Yusuf raided the warehouse. Our correspondent, Ibrahim Issa, has more on this. The Kanu State Police Commissioner, Usaini Gumel, confirmed the arrest of Tasi Walamin Roba, a senior special assistant to the cabinet office, and Ablik Adel Muhammad for alleged diversion of the state palliatives. The suspects were arrested at the warehouse in Sharada with more than 200 bags while repackaging rice and maize, meant to be shared as palliatives with the poor and vulnerable. Kanu State Commissioner of Police, Usaini Gumel, while confirming this to newsmen on the phone, says an intensive investigation has commenced to find out the number of bags repackaged and sold. Hussein Gumel said the two suspects would be charged to court after the conclusion of discrete investigations. A viral video shows Khan Uzid Governor Abba Yusuf inspecting the warehouse where more than 1,000 bags were kept. Ibrahim Isa, TVC News, Kanu. And for more on this, I'm being joined by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor of Kano State, Sunusi Baturi. Good to have you on the news at this time. So, yes, now, first off, beyond legal actions, now, what steps would the government be taking to recover any misappropriated palliative? And what is the government doing to, you know, prevent this from reoccurring again? All right, let me quickly take that question again. If you can hear me, I asked earlier, beyond the legal actions, what steps do you think the government needs to take to you know, recover any misappropriated palliatives and what should be done to, re to prevent any reoccurrence? All right, let's quickly go on to our next story. We will establish contact with our resource persons. Moving on to Niger State. All right, let's quickly take a short break and return with more stories. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still on to TVC News. Well, let's go to Sokoto, where a fire earlier today raised structures at the Nigeria Television Authority Sokoto Network Center. The cause of the incident is yet to be ascertained, as at the time of filing in this report.
And now the operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency raided some courier firms in Lagos where they foiled attempts by drug syndicates to export illicit substances including metamphetamine and opioids. And we have more in this report. <laughs> NDLEA operatives intercepted concealed drugs in jean trousers, doors, buttons, local soap and tins of beverage, en route, Europe, United Arab Emirates and Asia. Spokesperson of the NDLEA, Femi Baba Femi, in a statement, said the shipment of another illicit substance from Florida was equally intercepted at a Korea firm. Following investigations, officers tracked down the supposed recipient, Daniel Ogi, who was arrested at a Jao estate in Lagos. Operatives also arrested a drug kingpin who specializes in exploiting and recruiting young citizens to export meth to Asian countries. In another operation in Lagos, operatives on Friday recovered 393 kilograms of cannabis in a shop at Akala, Mushi, where a suspect who deals in Canadian loud was arrested by the police at Victoria Island. Now, the Lagos state government has urged traditional rulers to foster communal peace and economic development in their domains. And this was, af this was said after the first first year coronation ceremony, anniversary rather, of Oba Marufuddin Adilani in Lagos State. Our correspondent, Adidoja Salam Adini, has more on this. The role of traditional rulers is beyond being custodians of tradition and culture alone. Peaceful coexistence among people of different backgrounds and beliefs, resulting in remarkable economic progress, is also part of their designations. <laughs> At this event, traditional rulers sought government support in terms of proper legislation to keep their domains safe for economic development. I am using the opportunity to appeal to the Lagos State Government to please to take the lead in the initiation of installing the traditional rulers uh, to be involved in governance, both at the local government and at the state level. Uh, the traditional uh, institution uh, cannot be wished away when we want to talk about the development of the grassroots. If it's, we are like a bridge between the, uh, the people, the citizens of the local government and the local government itself. So most of the policies in terms of development, in terms of uh, well-being of, of our subjects is uh, being transmuted from the local government by with the traditional institution. Special advisor to the Governor on Rural Development and Chieftain's Affairs and other politicians advised that traditional rulers to also provide information that can help secure the state more. I have a series of meetings with them from time to time and they have been coming around with all sorts of ideas to improve the state in terms of facilities, in terms of communal behaviors, in terms of the way people relate among themselves in order to encourage and harmonize peace within their environment. That institution must be constitutionally backed. National Assembly must look out to look out for how to strengthen our traditional institution. It's high time we make our democracy homegrown and look for the fitting role for the traditional institution. Most of the civil cases that goes to court and goes to police shouldn't go to police. It should be traditional institution so that they can sit on little, little matters and then they congest uh, uh, the police. And they have a better way in resolving peace. They have peace uh, resolving mechanism better than the official uh, police uh, uh, issue. In Lagos, the synergy between the state government and traditional rulers have strengthened the progress of the state as they seek improved partnership. Well, let's return to one of our lead story where the Kano State Police Command has confirmed the arrest of a senior special assistant to the cabinet office and one other for alleged diversion of palliatives. And joining me now for more is the chief press secretary to the governor of Kano State, Sunusi Buturi, and he joins us via phone. Good to have you on the news. 
at this time. So earlier on, I asked you beyond the legal beyond the legal actions being taken now, what steps will be taken now to recover any of the misappropriated palliatives, and what should be done rather to prevent this uh, incident from reoccurring? Well, um, first of all, people need to understand that um, His Excellency the Governor has placed a very strong accountability mechanism in the distribution of the palliative, hence the reason for the discovery of this uh, scandal. Uh, first of all, he set up a committee which is called the Compliance Committee for the Distribution of Palliatives, which will look or have looked over the committee that has been doing the distribution across the 484 wards across the 44 local government of the state. And the distribution was for two parts. It's a general one for the needy, and there's another one for the physically challenged people, and also the families of retired military uh, police and other paramilitary officers. So therefore, uh, yesterday, uh, the governor personally uh, received a tip of information that some people are found to be in one warehouse providing some of the palliative uh, 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 grain. So therefore, His Excellency took some of the officials of the state governor to visit the place and discover what was happening there by himself and ordered the police commissioner to make uh, the necessary arrest of all the suspects and also the police to take over the place. So in essence, uh, the, 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 the thing happened, but there is no report yet of moving any of the palliative out of that place other than rebagging it and trying to move it out. And then his excellency reacted so promptly and proactively to ensure that what is meant for the people should be given to the people. And in terms of this now, the so, okay, go ahead. Let me quickly allow you land. Go ahead. Yes, so that's it. Go ahead. Yeah, so, but, you know, the, the transparency here is crucial. So how do you think this would impact a public trust? And how do you think the government can, you know, get the people to, to believe in them that this palliative should be distributed equally? Well, uh, the thing is that the distribution of palliative has happened in Kano and it has been concluded for both the general public and for the people living with a disability. What is discovered in this probably is a remnant of the distribution that is trying to be cornered to somewhere else. And the discovery is made by good Samaritans from the community and they reach out to the government and the government uh, was for us to to place the accountability mechanism by the governor himself going to the particular thing and ensuring that none of the bags are taken out of the warehouse and instructing the police commissioner to make arrest and take over the warehouse until further investigation is done. So in essence, uh, we're taking stock of the, the bags there, the bags that were uh, are destroyed and those that are repaired. Uh, and also trying to get to the root <coughs> of the case. If not because of the accountability mechanism placed by the governor, we wouldn't have done this discovery. So the discovery of the location and whatever was done in public, uh, uh, publicly by His Excellency along with his, his officials and right. journalists who were there on the spot. All right, and that's a fine place to leave it. The Chief Press Secretary to the Governor of Kano State, Sanusi Bature, thank you so much for your time with us on TVC News at 10. Let's quickly move on to other stories where the available data from government sources show that about 63% of adults with disabilities in Nigeria are unemployed. Also, access to health care, education and employment remains a critical challenge for people in this group. And this report by our correspondent Chenami Banmiyi takes a look at the issues and government's response to ensure inclusion for persons living with disability. Living with disability comes with a number of challenges, especially in developing countries. Stigmatization, violation of their rights, discrimination are some of the common challenges they face. They say access to health care 
quality education and employment is becoming increasingly difficult. The security by the gate, he refused us to enter. So this, ki this type of discrimination, we want it to be minimized. People should consider us as a human being. We are not an animal. Secondly, if we go to general hospital or any hospital you know, we are not having it friendly. Unemployment rates among persons with disabilities are almost double that of the general population due to attitudinal, mobility-related, technological and physical barriers, lack of accessible workplaces. Most of people with special needs may be educated, but the world failed to give them good job opportunity to allow them to contribute to the society and as well develop themselves. A 2018 data from Nigeria Demographic and Health Survey revealed that an estimated 7% of household members above the age of 5, as well as 9% of those 60 or older, experience some level of difficulty in at least one functional domain, seeing, hearing, communication, cognition, working or self-care. In January 2019, the federal government ratified the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Prohibition Act 2018 to address the needs of persons with disabilities, although implementation is yet to fully materialize. These non-governmental organizations said for 11 years, it has been drawing awareness to the plight of people living with disabilities, and this year, it organized a special workout session with the wife of the Niger State Governor, Fatima Bagu. Uh, it's no longer about awareness. The awareness is, is there. People know that people are different, but they try, they, they don't, in, uh, bring them close. They don't show them empathy. They don't show them kindness. They don't show them love. So we try to make sure that at least we tell the society, the communities, we start from communities, and that's why we do home visits. Try as much as you can to bring people with disabilities closer to you, and you will find out that they have abilities within those their disabilities. The advocacy now is for collective effort to enforce the prohibition of discrimination against persons with disability. Chenemi Bami, TVC News, Mina. And for more on this, I'm being joined by the CEO, founder TA Africa, TAF Africa, founder of Albino Foundation, Jackie Ekbele. Good to have you on the news at this time. So first off, how would you assess a government's response to the inclusion of persons living with disabilities in the society today, particularly focusing on the implementation of the PWB Act. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, you know, I am a little bit uh, very concerned, concerned about um, the capacity of uh, most of the state governors uh, to implement uh, issues like palliatives, uh, especially uh, to persons uh, with disability uh, because uh, very little or very minimal number of them have really invested in disability inclusion and um, a few more are very less concerned about the issues of persons with disability. You can see it in the way and manner they design projects uh, that will meet their needs or their nonchalant attitude towards persons with disability. Uh, I think a lot more has been done at the national level. Uh, the sub-national have not taken the issue of uh, disability inclusion very seriously. And if you were to add one more thing, what do you think should be changed in this perception so that people living with disabilities can be included in society? I think the first thing first is to um, further educate um, the sub-national, uh, especially uh, the, the, the governors. And, and we have taken this education and our advocacy to the governors forum. And I want to say that we were warmly received um, and the uh, Director General, uh, indeed, who is a person uh, with open mind.
is willing to work with us. A lot more has to be done. Many of them may be interested in doing something, but don't know what to do. Uh, others uh, allow the issue to be politicized, politicized by even the person, some persons with disability at the sub-national level. And um, the true uh, will to uh, not only to just uh, provide palliatives, but to do something more sustainable and enduring uh, and result oriented, as well as impacting the life of the people that they want to really uh, provide solutions uh, to. All right, Jake Ekbele, founder of Albino Foundation, thank you so much for your time with us on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for having me. Well, let's go outside Nigeria now, where four people have been killed, including two children, while one person was critically injured in a stabbing in faraway Rockaway, Queens, on Sunday morning. Chief of the New York City Police Superintendent Department, Jeffrey Madri, says police received a 911 call shortly after 5 a.m. from a caller who said her cousin was killing her family members. According to the police, chief officers responded to the residential block in Queens, where they pulled into a driveway and saw a man walking without a luggage. Upon seeing the officers, the man drew a kitchen stick, stick knife, stabbing one in the neck and chest and striking the other in the head. One of the officers drew his weapon and fired at the suspect. The suspect was taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. Now to some sports news now. The Super Falcons have arrived prior ahead of their second leg final African Women Nations Cup qualifier against Cape Verde. The 25-team contingent arrived Cape Verde earlier today with the team, with the aim rather, to settle in quickly and acclimatize with the environment. Leading from the first leg by five goals to nothing, the Falcons play Blue Shark Ladies on Tuesday Sylvina Weimar Garnett of uh, Liberia will be the center referee for the match. An aggregate win ensures that Nigeria qualifies for the 13th edition of the African Women Cup of Nations next July in Morocco. Well, it's time now for our Sunday specials. The activities of taxi cab robbers who dispossess unsuspecting commuters of their valuables and push them off vehicles in motion has put a special security task force in Abuja on its toes. The one-chance criminals are increasingly taking advantage of the failings of the transport system in the Federal Capital Territory to carry out their operations. Our correspondent Sifon Isian has more this. It's a criminal activity that earned its name from its mode of operation. If you are boarding a vehicle and you discover that a vehicle that carries five passengers are having four and remaining only one, one space, that is the one chance they are talking about. All of them are members of the same syndicate. By the time you come in, you are the only victim in that bed. One chance has gained notoriety as a kind of violent crime in Abuja. A special security tax force set up in October to combat this type of crime is yielding marginal results. This gang of one chance suspects is being held by the police. The suspects were arrested at the AYA area of Asokoro after picking an unsuspecting commuter. I mean, they open and close. So what we used to do is that we look for update driver, we look for somebody that has bag. So if you have bag, then I will carry you. 
If you don't put your back for put, maybe you get money. I'll tell you, say, because now for front, the person goes, I'll tell you, say, road safe today for road three, they go catch for two, they go come, you come down, they will go, go, you come down, go carry your back, they will go, go. I beg to forgive me, never to go back to crime anymore. Because 99 days for the thief, one day for the owner. Dalami Suleiman is an official of the Directorate of Road Traffic Services in Abuja. He and his men were involved in the arrest of the suspects. Uh, we are on a pin down, normal pin down, which uh, you know, early in the morning we do pin down from 6 to 10 uh, a.m. We don't uh, check document, we don't uh, stop and search. So we saw a vehicle, Sharon, in red color, was going round the roundabout. So we now suspected the vehicle that this vehicle is up to something. Thank God, as uh, we tried to stop the vehicle, and uh, there are two. Uh, two men inside and one woman. Before we know, Tango were beside the uh, police officers, which are also from Asokro Command here. The vehicle zoom up and they decide to like follow the vehicle. At the end, we found out that that vehicle was apprehended and there are one chance to do It is estimated that four in ten people in Abuja are fallen victim to one chance robbery. Daniel Chijoke was robbed and dropped off by one chance criminals. And precisely, I was even coming to AYA, you know, from a Kubo Express. You know that these people now diverted and take a burger route. And it was around the minister, he saw around there that they, were, they now stop. They stop us around there and discharge everybody. And they even told us that if, anybody, if you make noise or anything, they will even shoot us. So I think we were even very lucky. This is a major intersection in Abuja, known as the AYA Junction, a flashpoint for one chance criminals. Taxi operators use this area as a motor park, although the authorities have not designated it formally as a motor park. I boarded a taxi at AYA to Mbappe in a bid to understand the mode of operation of the taxi cab robbers. At the end of the journey, the driver threw more light on the operation of one chance robbers. This one chance don't operate in organized motor parks. They don't go there. Like this is our place. If they come around here, they will always move to around that filling station or at that roundabout. That is away from the motor park. Anybody that is along that place, and you know, because of the cost of living, people will always want to patronize ways cheaper. Taxi cab robbers take advantage of deficits in the transport system in Abuja to ply their ferocious trade. You see, the FCT as it is will not have low incidence of one child if they don't redesign. Really the roadmap of transport because one of the things that contribute to the high incidence of one chance in the city is the arrangements of the transport system. The transport system is not organized. What I mean by that is there is no organized boarding system where people can board vehicles and also alight from vehicles. There are measures commuters must take to avoid falling victim to one chance robbers. When you see them like that and you see that they are not ready to waste time these people don't, they are not ready to wait. If you delay their little time, they will soon come and leave you. Don't enter. Before you enter, please try and ask the driver, please sir, which route are you running? You know, there are vehicles, one entering a public a taxi, the vehicle you see being tinted, I don't think it's right for any other person to enter any taxi that is being tinted. Despite efforts of the authorities, Taxi cab robberies pose serious challenges to security in Abuja. For us, you to give us an information, a credible one, not an information that uh, is just to, for the purpose of uh, a personal vendetta. No. Accurate information. So then we will be able to help and get uh, uh, at the, the, the people that are disturbing the peace of the, of the FCT. And just as I was saying before, you, you also came in, as an individual, you can also help to effect arrest. For commuters, vigilance is a watchword 
when boarding taxis in Abuja. See Fun ACN TVC News, Abuja. Oh, finally, TVC's technical department emerged overall champions in this year's TVC Games. The team defeated seven other divisions of TVC Communications to win the annual competition for members of the staff of the company. The Games also featured broadcasters, Silver Bear Television and Hip TV in an invitational match. And TVC Games is a part of the Great Place to Work initiative of TVC Communications. After months of preparation in major cities across Nigeria, the first whistle blow on the football pitch signals the beginning of hours long battle among eight teams the Swans, News Team, Technical, who are the reigning champions, Max FM, Abuja, Adaba FM, TVC Entertainment, and the Falcon. Yes. It all came down to an exhilarating 10-hour show of sportsmanship, strength, camaraderie, rivalry and consumption of the sizzling chicken from one of the sponsors, Tasty Fried Chicken. The objective is to reiterate our commitment to our people. The objective is for people to have fun. We've met that. The objective is for people to bond. Our staff from different parts of Nigeria came in, so it's good to see faces, connect and all of that. People like to play, people like to bond, people like to relax. So instead of, they say, if you play hard, or rather work hard, you should play hard. So I think this is a commitment to that drive of putting people ahead of everything that we do every time. There's a time to work and there's a time to play very hard. After seven minutes of play, the score sheet started filling up with medals for the eight teams from field games like football, athletics, egg race and sack race to board games like chess, ayu, checkers, ludo and table tennis. This is the third edition of the TVC Communications Games. Every two years, teams battle for bragging rights, consolation prizes and the prize money. For most of the field races, it was difficult to determine the winner. But for the hearty eaters, the bones and left over on the plates gave out clear winners. Very excited. Um, we've tried for two times. Um, we, didn't, we didn't win. Now this is our third time. We trained very well. Kudos to the rest of the team. Everybody did very well. So it's um, as a result of our, of our intense training over the past weeks, you know, that we were able to perform, give this kind of performance. So I feel very excited, I feel very good, and it was a good tournament. Our opponents, they gave us their best, but we were able to stand tall. We only considered one goal out of three matches, and we scored four goals. So it shows that we are, we are the best team. Fearlessly, the eight teams assembled a team of six strong participants for the tug of war competition. One thing about the great place to work is this, which is bonding, team bonding, and as well as making everybody come together to see themselves as one. And TVC has been able to do that with the games and every other thing that we do. Every on Friday, the last Friday of the of the month, we have fun Friday, you know. But it's not enough. This makes it more bigger because we have people from Adaba, people from Abuja, people from Akure, and every other place. They come together not just to come and say they want to eat but to showcase the skill that apart from we being broadcast journalists, okay, we are skillful in soccer, we are skillful in board games, we are also skillful in tennis and every other game. We just finished the talk of war now and it was really, really exciting. So that is the essence and that is one thing that makes CVC a very great place to work. Although the title holders for the 2021 TVC Games lost out on the football pitch, they got enough medals to retain their place at the top of the table. Of course, we're able to catch up with the old times, what's happening over there. We want to know ourselves outside our usual hello siloma. Play at equal and playing field, interact, argue things out. And I think it's as you to, to, to make us band together more. 
and I think it has achieved that purpose today. You could see everybody excited. You could see there is no level, there is no class. Everybody is interacting, irrespective of your level or your keda, irrespective of what you do or whatever you don't do. And it's, uh, it's the ideology behind these TVC games, and I think he's living the purpose. Second place taking the silver medal. News department. Congratulations, news department, on your silver medal. Until the next time in 2025, when teams meet on the field of play, TV's communications hopes to constantly engage its staff and maintain its place on the African map as the first company in Nigeria to emerge a great place to work. An amazing outing, I would say. Indeed, it's a time to work hard and a time to play very hard. Well, that's where we wrap this day's, this night's episode of TVC News, which also featured our Sunday specials. Many thanks for being a part of it. And on behalf of the team, have a pleasant night rest. Good night.